Hi, my name is Seth Stiminger. Welcome to ECTV. Today we'll be exploring wastewater treatment. To start us off, Alex Golson has traveled to the Ventura Sewer and Wastewater Services Facility to interview Vince Inez, the Wastewater Utility Manager. Hi, I'm Alex Golson, and we are here at Ventura Water at the Wastewater and Sewage Services Facility. And we are going to be here talking to Vince Inez. So my name is Vince Inez. I am the Wastewater Utility Manager for the Ventura Water Reclamation Facility. I oversee all the operations uh, of the wastewater program. The city of Ventura has a population of about 110,000, which we serve. So what exactly is wastewater treatment comprised of? Vince gave us a tour of the facility so we could see for ourselves, and it's impressively complex. It's a seven-step process consisting of adding things in and taking them out a lot. First, there are two processes through which solids are removed. A pool where the water is allowed to sit, causing solids to fall to the bottom. The other is a large filter where things like paper would be scooped out of the water. There are also big pits of bubbling water full of a unique bacterial sludge called liquor. This liquor is mixed in, aggressively aerated, starved of oxygen, reclaimed, then recycled. You can even tell the age of the bacteria based on the color of the bubbles. For more in-depth explanation, let's go back to Vince. So it starts with our Headworks facility, which screens out as many of the solids and inorganics as possible. We don't want that to come through our system because it can interrupt piping, pumps, treatment processes, you know, biology of the treatment process as well. So we try to screen all of that out. From there, it goes to our primary clarifiers, which is the main separation point between water and solids. And what that does is the solids will sink to the bottom of a tank, and then we take the water off the top of the tank, and the solid stream goes one way, and the solids go another. Our liquid stream goes to our aeration basins and anoxic zones, and what that does is, is uh, removes the ammonia out of the water. We have to nitrify and denitrify the water, which is the process of converting the, the ammonia that's in the wastewater to nitrogen gas, which will go from there to the disinfection part portion of the plant, where we have to chlorinate the water to remove any other pathogens and disinfection, and then we have to dechlorinate the water, which we have to neutralize the chlorine before it's sent out. From there, the water can go to our uh, distribution system for a recycled water program. Uh, we water the golf courses within the city, and it goes to some irrigation and industrial areas, as well as Marina Park. From there, the water flows through our three wildlife ponds, which we have and are very open to the public during the days, and they're very popular. And from there, the water will go to the Santa Clara River estuary for final discharge. Our regular at dry average flow is 7.5 million gallons a day. So imagine a milk carton when you go to the grocery store. Seven and a half million of those are treated at this facility every day. And annually ends up being about three billion gallons of water. It really is amazing how much gets done here. But what's even more amazing is the constant change in the wastewater industry to keep up with modern demands. Projects are planned out years in advance and apply expertise in many fields, mechanical and electrical engineering, biology, fluid physics, and chemistry all go into this incredible process and its advancement. Of course, there are several projects happening right now. So we have several capital improvement projects that are currently in progress right now. So one of the biggest things is when we, when we have our capital improvement project process that we do, we look at buying more efficient equipment. One of our projects that we're working on is a aeration basin uh, upgrade, which we're putting new blowers in that are more efficient, newer technology than the previous blowers that we had that were installed in the 1970s. We are currently going through another capital improvement project where we're adding a membrane bioreactor, or MBR for short. And what that does, it's a more efficient way of treating the water with a more higher quality effluent than our current processes that we have. One of the things is the MBR will eliminate four of our other capital improvement projects that we previously had on the books. So now we, we're saving money in that way and not just rebuilding old infrastructure, but bringing in new technology to improve the treatment process. What water will be coming and going from the facility in the future? Demand for water has been going down over the past few years, but we are still struggling to keep up. Ventura Sewer and Wastewater Services are working to bring new solutions into the domestic sector and are very close to implementing one fully already. So with all of our new capital improvement projects, 
what we're doing is we're looking at climate change and where we're going to be at in not just five years or 10 years, but 20 years to 40 years down the road. Uh, we're currently doing some studies on climate change and sea level rise to see how that's going to impact our facility. So during design of our facilities now, we're looking at, well, should be the how high should the tanks be off the ground? Let's bring the electrical panels up, things like that, so to prevent any problems from uh, climate change or sea level rise. So one of the things that the city of, is working on right now, it's called the State Water Interconnect. Right now, the city of Ventura currently relies on local groundwater sources from wells and the Ventura River. We have no other source of water. So what we're doing is building a pipeline to Cayugas Municipal District and bringing in state water for our state allocation. So the Ventura Water Pure Project has been on the books for the city for the last five to 10 years. We're very close in the final design of that project. What it's going to do is give us another water source for the city of Ventura. We're gonna take the wastewater that's normally discharged to the Santa Clara River estuary and treat it to drinking water standards. And right now our plan is to use indirect potable reuse, which the water will be injected into the ground and extracted at another point and go directly into the drinking water system. There are two primary processes in the treatment of our water, water and wastewater. What is the difference? Water treatment is the treatment of our surface and groundwater resources and is primarily treating for minerals. Wastewater treatment is far more complex as it needs to account for extensive chemical and biological pollution that are not strongly present in our natural water resources. Both are required to maintain our water resources, but wastewater treatment has shown itself to be one of the most important advents of society something we learned from the River Thames in England during the Industrial Revolution. So the water and wastewater treatment are very different streams. The groundwater that is treated is mainly just treated for iron and manganese and then disinfected. The wastewater process is a lot more complex because the water has a lot more contaminants. The wastewater that comes into our facility is everything from washing machines, toilets, sinks, industrial uses, that all has to be taken out rather than just pulling water out of a groundwater source and treating it. With all this in mind, what is actually the most important thing for the strengthening and continued success of our wastewater treatment programs? Of course, paying your taxes and utilities helps immensely, but is there anything else you can be doing? Vince has some thoughts about that, so I'll leave the rest up to him. From my perspective, it's education is the biggest thing. Getting the public involved in what we're doing and the benefits of it, that's gonna build a water source for generations to come. Getting young people like you guys involved in this and, and knowing what's going on and knowing what the future and the impacts are gonna to bring to us and just getting involved and knowing what we do here is key. That makes things a lot easier when people know where their money's going. If we're asking for X amount of dollars for a big size project, you're going to be like, well, I've been to their wastewater plant. I've seen the condition that it's in. Yeah, I'll, I'll vote for that. I'll vote for that, that prop or find ways to pay for it or pay for it through rates and things like that. So, so education is the biggest key from my perspective on moving forward and, and making people aware of what is done at a wastewater facility and how, how we're going to improve it for future generations. Thank you so much, Vin Sinez. And... I hope that you all got some great insight into the wastewater treatment process. I'm Alex Golson, and back to the studio. Thank you for your time, Vince, and thanks, Alex, for heading out and getting all that info. Up next is Sadia Islam, who will be interviewing Mary Wu, a professor who teaches about the water and wastewater treatment process. Hello, my name is Sadia Islam, and I'm with CAPS Media. And today I'm interviewing Mary Lou. Hello. Would you mind introducing yourself for me? Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, my name is Dr. Mary Wu, and I am the lead faculty at Ventura College in the Water Science program. Um, what kind of education is needed to enter the field of water and wastewater treatment? Yes, so there isn't, uh, there is only a high school diploma required or GED equivalent to enter the field and then you can move up uh, in the field uh, but having an AA degree from Ventura College or a bachelor degree from another college will help you to advance faster uh, in your career. For the certification, in your personal experience, after getting your certificate, how much can you make? Good question. Uh, let me clarify on certification so as uh, as I let you know there is no 
education beyond a high school diploma or a GED equivalent to enter, but you do need a certification. And a certification is a combination of experience and passing what we call certification exam. There are three different uh, three different fields you could enter in in the field of water treatment. You can enter water distribution, drinking water treatment, and wastewater treatment, and they each have their own certification. Now, in terms uh, of pay, the median pay for entering into the water treatment industry is uh, nationally is uh, $48,000 per year. But in California, from personal experience, I know uh, several operators who've entered uh, as a, a, at entry level positions and uh, are earning in in the in the realm of sixty thousand uh, dollars per year. What fields of practice can be joined from an education in water or wastewater treatment? Uh, I just want to say to start to answer this question because there's a lot of opportunity. Um, I want to say that at Ventura College we train students in our uh, AA program, our associates program, we train students to enter the fields of water distribution, so water distribution operators, water treatment operators, and we also train students to be wastewater treatment operators, but that is not the whole field of, of water. There are many other opportunities. Uh, you could also work in compliance, so our water treatment is highly regulated and we need compliance officers to make sure we're following all of our regulations and we are cleaning our water appropriately. You could work in uh, water conservation. I, my uh, very good friend works in water conservation and manages droughts and helps uh, to educate the public on conserving water and helps to source our water. Uh, you could work in what we call source control uh, at a wastewater treatment facility. That position, would someone would actually examine the wastewater that's coming in and be sure uh, there isn't anything in that wastewater the facility can't treat. Uh, but also, I have a list of other jobs. You can be a backflow uh, technician. Backflow is a very important issue in our distribution system. Uh, you could be a system engineer, you could be an instrument controller, a chemist, a microbiologist, you could be a um, public outreach specialist, a meter reader, uh, you can work in IT. We have very complex IT systems that run our facilities. You could be a supervisor, a manager, a water master, a pump and motor technician. I actually think that might be, have been fun to do in myself. <laughs> um, and, you could be a diver, a hydrologist, a hydrogeologist, an attorney, a city planner. I could keep going on. I have a really long list. So there are just, um, because water is so integrated into our lives, there are many opportunities that stem from it, not just what we're focused on right now at Ventura College. Yeah. Could you give a quick overview of the main points you teach in your classes? Uh, our program focuses on uh, training students to be distribution treatment operators, drinking water operators, uh, and wastewater treatment operators. We offer certificates in water, so drinking water and wastewater. And then we offer classes on how to source our drinking water, how to treat our drinking water, uh, how to collect and treat our wastewater. We also offer specialty classes like uh, backflow, a backflow course and you could get certified in that course to be a backflow technician. We offer pumps and motor courses, uh, instruments and process control, a chemistry and water chemistry and biology classes. Um, so that's um, what our program looks like um, as an overview right now, but we are looking to expand uh, in the future and we're hoping to expand into storm water because as you guys probably witnessed right with the uh, recent storms, uh, there's a lot of work to be done in in, in uh, managing our stormwater mm -hmm. and possibly capturing it right and using it for our drinking water. And there's a lot of work to capture it and also to keep it clean so that if it does wash to rivers or we do capture it and use it, it's, it's uh, fairly clean and doesn't need a lot of treatment. So there's quite a bit of work to do in stormwater. What has led to the surge of water and wastewater treatment importance? 
So the main things that have led to the importance of water treatment in general uh, are population and uh, drought. So there's more of us. We need more water. Uh, but also we've been experiencing in the West successive droughts. And the combination of more people and less water have put the uh, the industry of water treatment, uh, I, I guess, in the public's eye because uh, with water shortages, we need to be able to treat and reuse our water well. Okay, now what are some things that you think are important to know about the water coming out of their sea? A lot of planning and work went into every drop that comes out of the water in, in, in your tap. We just turn on the tap, right, and we expect the water to come out. But quite a bit of work and planning went into every drop that comes out of our tap. Uh, city planners and water purveyors and water treatment facilities, we all work to source and treat the water. Clean running water is really a privilege for us in, in the U.S. And I say that in a very positive way because we are just really lucky to have clean water. Clean water has been just uh, one of the biggest public health advances in the last few centri centuries, and not the whole world has clean water, and we're really lucky uh, to have it. And it's really easy to take it for granted because it's just so consistent, right? We never question, will the water come out? We see instances in the news, right, where there's communities without water, there's communities that have lead in their water. So don't take your clean water for granted. Every water utility is required to provide a document called a CCR, Consumer Confidence Report. And I encourage you all to look at yours because it tells you what is in your water. I also encourage you to notice any changes in your water. Does the color change? Does the smell change? Uh, does the taste change? Because those can indicate issues. And you could call your utility and say, I noticed this change. Can you mm -hmm. tell me is something wrong? What are the obstacles that water and wastewater treatment are currently facing to maximize our water res resources? The first one is conservation. We struggle to conserve water. I know I should conserve water, and I do try, but I'm not perfect. I'm in the water industry, right? And so I know those that are not in the water industry struggle more, too. Uh, another is we are facing an aging infrastructure. So our pipes are aging. A lot of our pipes were laid, you know, 100 years ago or, or 50 years ago. And so I, I found an article that examined the age of our wastewater pipes. And the average age of our wastewater pipes is 45 years old. Uh, so our, um, just like our bridges and our roads, our, our pipes are aging and it costs money to replace them. And we're seeing a lot of uh, failures in our, in our infrastructure. Uh, and that's a huge obstacle. And then uh, another huge obstacle is qualified personnel. And this is why it's actually a great time to get into the field of water treatment because there is uh, kind of, a, a, I guess, a vacuum developing because we have people retiring. I think I read something about 30% of the water treatment workforce is eligible for retirement very soon. And we're not seeing young people being interested in the field. So there's a lack of qualified personnel to hire. Uh, so it's great for people who are looking to get into the field, but it's an obstacle for people working in the field and trying to operate our facilities. Is the water and wastewater treatment industry able to keep up with water, modern water demands? I don't want to give you a yes or no answer because I think it's perspective, but I do want to say that it is a big challenge <laughs> uh, to keep up with uh, modern water demands because we are using more and more water uh, as our population grows. And again, our local sources are drying and our imported sources of water are also becoming smaller. Our recent storms really helped with this. Before our recent storms, a lot of our reservoirs in California were well below their capacity. Um, but with our recent rainfall, our recent atmospheric river rainfall, a lot of our reservoirs have become much fuller. And uh, for example, our local reservoir, Casitas, went from 40% of its historic average to 56% of its historic average. A lot of other reservoirs around the state have become even fuller. Uh, so that's 
that's good. But also before our recent rainstorms, uh, our snowpack in our uh, Sierra Nevada mountains, which we depend on for our water, it was about 42% of its historic average. Uh, now, after these, these rainstorms, we're at about 1.5 to 2 times the historic average of our snowpack. So if we could keep that snowpack and it doesn't melt too quickly because we get, you know, successive warm days, uh, that's really going to help us. Before these recent storms, our main sources of water, you know, our reservoirs, our snowpack, they were quite low and we were having difficulty keeping up. Why is it that water and wastewater treatment are so invisible to the populace despite its tremendous importance? I think it's because water, our water is so consistent, right? We never question when we turn on our faucet, is the water going to be there and is it going to be clean? Uh, we don't have to work to get our water, right? We don't have to walk anywhere to get our water. We just know it will be there. And so we don't need to think about it. Uh, we don't need to wonder how did the water get to my faucet. And I think that's a big a big part of it. Also, I, I don't think, I, I know I never learned about water treatment in school. And I don't think it's like in grade school or high school. I, I don't think it's become part uh, of the curriculum uh, uh, as a standard part of the curriculum. And I think it would help uh, quite a bit for, uh, both in recruiting people and the public knowledge if, if we did do that. Just how safe is recycled wastewater to use? We're still researching that. <laughs> um, but if I had to give you a short answer, I would say uh, recycled water is cleaner than any water you're going to find on the planet. <laughs> because we work really hard. We use the most advanced technology to clean the water to make sure that it is safe. Uh, but we are still establishing the technology for it and still establishing the regulations around it to make sure it's safe. In a weird, unofficial way, we are already, uh, sorry about that, reusing our water. But to officially reuse it, um, we, as I said, we are applying very advanced technology. Some of this advanced technology is called ultrafiltration, microfiltration, we also have reverse osmosis, and we also have something called AOP, advanced oxidation processes. And this is where we generate very reactive molecules to break down any contaminants that are in our water. And uh, it's a very effective technology. And then we also have a UV disinfection that we're working on to become more common versus our chemical disinfection. And it's a very efficient, very clean disinfection process. So we have a number of technologies that we are developing that are advanced and very effective uh, to, to treat and, and reuse recycled water. What would you say is the most important thing to understand about water and wastewater treatment? For me, I think the, the most important thing, uh, I, this I think is more the personal, but I guess also a a scientific level, is that we're very lucky to have good water treatment in the U.S. And the reason why we are very lucky is that there are countries in the world that don't have centralized water treatment, and it is a enormous public health issue. Uh, in countries that do not have good water treatment, good central water treatment facilities, diarrheal disease is the number two uh, cause of death for children under five. In di di diarrheal disease, uh, you, the way you um, come down with that type of disease is by drinking dirty water, water that has sewage in it. The statistics are that uh, 525,000 children under five die every year of diarrheal disease, and that's preventable if we treat our water. And then there are 1.7 billion cases of childhood diarrheal disease that we can eliminate if we uh, improve hygiene, we share information on how to improve hygiene, and we share information and resources to treat water. And that's a huge impact we can have on the health of our world. But thank you so much for having me here. Nice I appreciate the opportunity. You. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Um, my name is Sadia Islam, and this is CAPS ECTV. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sadia, for that interview, and thank you so much for coming in, Ms. Wu. For further information, you can visit Ventura Water 
Ventura Water's website at www.cityofventura.ca.gov forward slash 855 forward slash Ventura dash water and Miss Wu at Ventura College in the Water Sciences Building. Thank you for watching. Thank you.